you stand please to the flag. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a report of closed session. In closed session, by a vote of 5 to 0, the board took action to accept the resignation classified employee number 76000078 in lieu of termination. I uh, have a motion to adopt the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Carol, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? A few uh, edits. Um, first, uh, on the 2018 meeting dates, uh, it should be July 17th and not July 18th. All that is good. On consent, item 12, AII, on page 22, which is the minutes, the vote says 5 0, it should have read 4 0 1. Uh, member of Mom is absent. And then on item 12D, which is the dance trip, the hotel has changed. Those changes in the agenda are acceptable to motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is adopted. Um, we have special recognition tonight on the reflection of winners, and that's Jennifer Baker. Is, is, oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Turn it over to you. Thank you for having us here. It's an honor to be here to recognize the students in our district for their amazing creativity. So we have some slides for you today. The PTA uh, contest is a yearly contest. It's a national contest where students are encouraged to explore the arts. And this year's theme was within reach. We had about 200 district participants and we have uh, five of the lucky winners here to honor tonight. We have six different categories that the students can enter and five different divisions based on their grade level. And the students have to do their work on their own. No parent help is permitted. I especially appreciate seeing what the kids do when they come up with their thoughts and ideas. Um, this contest is judged in a very unique way. 50% of the points in this contest come from what the students write about their work. So when they talk about what their inspiration was for addressing the theme, their creativity in what they intend to create is 50% of what they do. And then the, the product, their creativity and their mastery of that subject is the other 50%. So we have all of the division winning entries uh, are going to be listed. Six of our kids are here and proud to present Rosie Simpson. Rosie, will you come up to the podium? Great, going to shake your hand. Congratulations. And Rosie had a, a wonderful dance that she did for us called Find Your World. Congratulations. <laughs> Rosie actually had a double header, so we're going to see her in just a second. Our division winner from El Moro in literature was Kalima Chanel. Our division winner in oh, literature. Oh, Kalima! <laughs> That's Taylor. That's oh, you're Taylor? Taylor? Yep. Is Kalina here? <laughs> okay, where's Kalina? Oh, Taylor. Oh, is this Kalina no. or Taylor? Taylor. Taylor. She's Taylor. Taylor. Oh, is Kalina here? Oh, I'm sorry. I no. Speak. Okay. No, sorry. No, no, no. Hang on just a minute, sweetie. I will get right to you. <laughs> All right. Don't be, but don't be uh, shy when I call your name. From division winner at uh, Top of the World. Yeah, Warren Whitley. Division winner in literature, Ruby Sampson. Division winner from Thurston in literature, Lauren Troutenberg. And division winner in the Little Beach High School, a little boy, Julian Williams Wolford. <laughs> For a musical composition, Rosie Simpson, there you are again. Rosie, come on. I 
are super proud of Rosie for entering the contest more than once. Thank you very much. And her dance was really, really cool. It was the only dance that we got, and I really was proud of you for doing both of those entries. Music composition for Top of the World, Ali Alexander Nottage. Ali, come on up. And music composition from Thurston, Noah Novit is here. And our music composition winner at Laguna Beach High School is Brady Moss. Our division winner in photography at Top of the World in primary, Grayson Bozopia. And our division winner of photography from Intermediate was Mia Yates. It's great for you to get to scroll through and just see the highlights, even though the kids couldn't be here. Our photography winner at Thurston, Magdalene Yen. From Laguna Beach High School, Lauren Tran. Competing with Emmy Wen tonight. At El Moro Elementary, our division winner, Taylor Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Sani, and our division winner at El Moro Elementary, Emily Williams, our visual arts winner, Top of the World, Emma Bird, Emma Bird. Congratulations, Ed. Our Thurston Middle School division winner in visual arts, Lila Day Goldstein. Beach High School Visual Arts winner, Amy Yu. Our Top of the World film maker, Serena O'Neill. <laughs> Did a very cute video about a day in the life of her dog. <laughs> Our division winner from Thurston, Ali Schneider, Jordan Schneider. By the way, if anybody comes in, let, let me know. Okay, and who have I missed? Have I missed anybody? No, so let's have a big round of applause. This time I'd like to ask Taylor to come join Allie and all of our division winners. Can you stand up? We're going to take a quick picture and wherever you would like us to smile. Uh, if we can, I'll just. Do you want to come up here or? Um, no, we can group back. Okay, here. shall we group right over here? Okay, no, and you can come stand back here by Dr. Gloria. Okay, let's have some people right in front of here. Yes. All right, we'll just. All right, one, two, and. Okay, thank you guys. Let's give another round. kids are here representing the kids that could not be here for reflections that the next stage in the contest is that the kids will go to fourth district for competition and there their works will be in competition with all the students from Orange County that are at your age level that participated and there's a wonderful uh, reception near Valentine's Day in February where you'll be invited to come and see who the winners of that contest were and that goes all the way through the state and then now even nationals and Laguna Beach has had many kids go on to those levels. So we look forward to seeing your works do really well in the contest. Thank you for participating. That's our show. Thanks, Jennifer, for all your hard work. Jennifer, are cookies out there for us? Yeah, please take some cookies. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> Before I make a big mistake, could I recognize my team? Anne, you're here. Julia, could you come up? Is Nicole here? Is Amelia here? Anne and Julia, come close enough so we can give you a round of applause. These ladies are, you know, my right hand, left hand.
a village. It really does. And I am so, so um, thankful to have you guys help with the questions. Thank you so much. Thanks for Thank keep, keeping on. <laughs> <laughs> Determined with Lubufa and also CSEA that we are going to be doing that IVB training, and I think school board will be involved too. And I'm just grateful for that opportunity to further strengthen that power of us because I think it's really strong here. I think it, with our political climate and um, there's neighboring districts that are in such an, a, an unhappy place that I get tons of feedback from all the time, and so it just makes me grateful again that we have. The leadership and support and the strength of community here that I think really benefits Labufa and our classified and our administrators and mostly our students. And I think the students really feel that being recognized for the things that they do. It kind of um, culminated, I got to do leadership training with TOW, El Moro, and some of our ASB kids, and there were classified uh, and teachers there, and Holly was there, <laughs> and um, kids from all different levels, and the kids loved it. Our students got thank you notes from the elementary kids just talking about how um, they miss them already so much and don't know if they can make it without them. So it was a great show of that power of us for them all um, working together. We appreciated ASP's participation though. Thank you. Um, 
Um, I would have to uh, concur with you that um, I think it's going to be a great uh, year um, having a partnership with the administration and uh, with the um, um, CSBA starting off with the IBD uh, training for negotiations. Um, it's uh, going to be a great partnership. And uh, CSBA actually last week had a embarking training at the CSBA headquarters launch field office, which was a little bit uh, different from our normal uh, training. So I'll look forward to the IBD uh, training. And uh, we have our uh, final uh, ballot voting for our classified employee of the year. Uh, I think that closes uh, tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we have our December business update. So and, uh, that's all I have to report for today. And uh, happy holidays to everybody. And the holiday season is just begun for everyone. And uh, just look forward to a great holiday break and a great new year. Is it the those the category recognitions again? Yes, um, for each of the department. Good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, do we have any reps from the organizations? The school power, PTA, the energy report, the ones that we have to just in case. Uh, board members, if you want to attend something at an appointment. Okay, I'll start. Um, so I did attend the calendar committee meeting which was several uh, productive hours gathering data. So that's a summary. Uh, we also attended the California School Board Association Conference in San Diego. And I'm really appreciative that the district supports us to go. And I just want to share three takeaways I got from that conference. Um, there was a Google presenter, and he's called an education evangelist. I just love the title. Uh, and he noted that the future needs Digital leaders, which entails digital literacy, but more importantly, problem solving. Technology is not the silver bullet. It is there to enable and support learning. And I think we're embracing that idea in Laguna. Uh, I also went to a great session on virtual and augmented reality, uh, which was amazing. And as a teaching tool, which is an exciting opportunity uh, for unique experiences in the classroom. And my last uh, takeaway was we always need to invest in continuous learning model for not only students, but teachers and staff, and that is an overall investment in our whole district. That's helpful. Thank you. And um, also grateful that, that we participate in and the board participated. I'm going to skip from on the meeting on Zoom and then before the meeting call. Next week. Oh, my report. Oh, you didn't come. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Carol, you didn't come. Yes, sorry, because that was, <laughs> I just went to the last one, thank you. Um, this is the last parent stakeholder meeting. We um, had, there was, there were less people, but that one was kind of an ad hoc one. And um, I know both of you were there, and you could speak to it as well. But the, the parents seemed to be um, very excited, and kind of, for them, I think, it's like they always thought we did parts of this, like, it was just, Right, like they thought that those things were there of interest, and then other stuff that they hadn't seen that they're just they're very excited by. And Dr. Keller had just started releasing some of the information, showing us the information, but it wasn't all final. But enough to make they all want to come back and see what's going on. So there's some excitement. Thank you. Yeah, um, I did go to JFMC, the Joint Fiscal Management Committee, and as usual, lots of good information. Um, always uh, something to take away that. Just is always amazing to you. Like seriously, they're gonna do that to us. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, always, always good. <laughs> and I also attended uh, School Power Endowment last Friday, and Felicia made a great presentation. And I'm hoping we can move ahead with uh, she had a, a proposal for a speaker that I hope they might help us with. And then um, Mike was there talking about Rocket Ready and the uh, the fund need and how we're gonna present that. And again, they always appreciate everything that we have to, or, uh, the partnership, it's a, it's a good partnership. Um, then I too uh, went to the CSBA um, conference and never one to just love spending time like that, but actually had a great time, totally energized. So um, my three takeaways were, um, LBUSD is indeed a singular district, and that many of our many of the presentations were geared to significantly different demographic, size, or economic situations than ours. However, there was a gem of essential information that I was able to take away from each session. For instance, I, uh, I went to one on attendance at, by Twin Rivers, which is a big district up in Sacramento. Has, couldn't be any more different. 
the thing, you know, attendance is something we struggle with. The superintendent of that district has a letter waiting for each kid the first day of school. This is what we expect. We want you to be here. Here's why. Boom. I mean, just something simple like that, and it, it makes a difference. It's very impactful. Um, that one about family engagement, which begins not with our vision for their children, but what their vision is. Volunteerism is not necessarily engagement. There are many other simple ways to engage each family on their terms with their child's outcomes in mind. Build families' capacity to engage at home. And then finally, yes, I'm going there, religion in schools. Create a teachable moment from a wedge issue. Um, so this can work in many areas. You, know, you can use this across things. But um, the presenter, who is an attorney from Lozano and Smith, I believe, um, just made one point in passing that you're not doing your students any favors by graduating them, not knowing the difference between a Sikh and a Muslim. When you think about that, it's history. When you think about that, it's how you it's how you frame it, and it's and and we need we need to be we need to be graduating well informed global citizens. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, I attended the community coalition, and Dr. Keller gave a fabulous presentation, as he always does. He had a little. Uh, trouble with the technology there, but he made it through. Uh, there was also a, a new person there, energetic young woman from MAP that has a lot of programs that are available if you'd like to use them. The, 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 the presentation that I met that meant the most to me, I'm only going to talk about one of them, was the one that was mismeasurement of district's vital signs about testing. And you know, we know that local realtors, our parents, newspapers, we all size up districts by numbers. Um, and the numbers come from whether it's CDs, accountability dashboard, our own accountability reports. Um, but our representation is based on interpreting those numbers and are we really doing that fairly and meaningfully? And they have three different stories about misuse of data. And more effective, you know, that there are more effective ways to use assessments and monitor progress. And then it brought back all those old statistics classes when we, we talked about the false positives and the false negatives. And when you get a score, you know, that there's there's a SEM, a standard error measurement, and you really have to look at that range of scores, and we shouldn't be putting we shouldn't be putting students in a group to get help. If, you know, it, it, because they're close to that score, they may, might on another day have been higher and been fine. And the same on the other, on the other side, we shouldn't prevent a student from going ahead because of, because of a score. And then also, there should be an explanation going home with the state scores to parents so they don't realize, so they don't think that every score is, that's it. It's, it's not. It's like, they, if you if you did it over time, of course you'd have a better picture. But one score doesn't actually have all that much meaning, and we're putting we're putting way too much emphasis on a score. And the scores that that we're currently using, uh, they develop too quickly. It takes about five years to really develop a good test, and we the state had to I mean, they had to get it out really quickly. And the other thing is. It doesn't, um, it do, it doesn't correlate from year to year. If you look at the past scores, a second grader language arts score could be pretty high, third grade low, got the same kid, and then fourth grade high again. Well, it's not that the third grade teachers are doing a poor job. It is not, the test doesn't, isn't, um, they didn't take the time or the money to make it like a, like a ruler where you go from here to here. They're asking different things. So just a lot of information about testing that was helpful. Thank you. Uh, things that I attend were taking a hiatus for December. So um, all I want to comment um, to Lisa mm -hmm. for the calendar committee that I'm also attending is that she provided a lot of data based on the first meeting. And so the groups have a lot to work with, and that means that it, it, the time went by quickly, and it really, it really has value when you have that much to work with. 
So I just want to say I appreciate you making it have that substance. I don't know where we're going to end up, but at least it was, you know, we know, we know what we're looking at. Uh, I'll keep mine short. Uh, one, thanks to the PTA and uh, the PTA Reflection Chairs for their hard work and for our students uh, willing to continue to, to do that. It's, it's great to see high school students and middle school students still participating. You don't see that in every district. Um, so I, I do agree with Jennifer that uh, our students fare very well in, this, in those competitions um, and, and it is part of the work that we do in our classrooms as well that helps that. It's not just about natural ability, the theme is what she had talked about as well. So it's, it's uh, great to honor the students, and I was appreciative of the night that they put on at the top of the world as well. Um, the other, uh, just again, thanking uh, the group and the CSCA for their continued support and, and hard work and dedication to our students. Um, it's uh, The holiday season's a busy season, and I know that it's, it's kind of a sprint here for the next two weeks uh, before break, um, but I won't have an opportunity to um, say I, I wish them all a happy break for those that are going to have some time off. Um, I know we will have some people um, that will still be uh, be working, but uh, much deserved break and uh, looking forward to a new year when they turn the corner. So, thank you. So, um, I just returned today uh, from the SEBA JPA meeting, which is our dental and vision insurance is for SEBA, and they offer a one day training and then we have our board of directors meeting. And the focus is really on total health, which we're seeing, you know, we're doing with students. It's a focus on mindfulness as well as is the physical and emotional well-being of, of all of our employees. Um, it, you know, it really helps us keep costs down, which is an added benefit. Um, so we'll be um, convening our first wellness committee meeting next week. Um, that we're, is a subcommittee of the insurance committee that will be working on developing some strategies to you know, help bring those things to our employees. Um, also, we have, we're finalizing our Teacher of the Year and CS, uh, Classified School Employee of the Year uh, in a variety of categories, which we always do. Um, and we will be formally announcing those at the Holiday Open House next, uh, on the 20th, from tomorrow. So stay tuned. We'll be surprising those folks in the next week. So, and that's, that's the group also? Yes. So Teacher of the Year and our Classified School Employee of the Year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Actually, you know, Dr. Okay, thank you. Well, good evening. Um, happy holidays. So our teachers have been busy attending trainings and our principals have been uh, wonderful supporting them. So um, history, social studies have been busy with the history project and paranoid math project is back and all the in classrooms. Um, we've had some NGSS planning days. Uh, a group of five teachers, Mr. Denny and I were up in San Francisco for about two and a half days of this to the symposium, and that was wonderful fun. I, I do want to um, uh, give a shout out to Irene for her her IA trade show that she um, helped facilitate uh, a bit ago. Um, it was it was well received, and we are appreciative of her willingness to continue to work collaboratively. DLAC is on Thursday, it's a busy season, but it's a great one, and we're grateful for your support. Thank you. Yeah. Royce, can I get you to come up? Maybe. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Which one? Up to the podium, please. Would you like me to present? All the way over there? <laughs> All the way. Okay, so as Royce walks up, I just want to thank he and his staff. It's a week long of gathering lots of data. And with not just thanking his staff, but our staff as well, because every department's involved in the audit. And it's going through a lot of different elements of our district to make sure that we're continu continuing to do things not just right, but constantly improving. So, Royce, thank you very much for coming to the It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the previous presentation. So, I'm here to present to you your audited financial statements. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, your audited financial statements. So, what does that really mean for some of you who may not have uh, had this presentation before? The audit is intended to provide reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free of material misstatements. And I always like to point out reasonable versus total. The total means that we're here and we're looking at every single transaction, and that's not what we do. Ours is a, it's a higher level view. Uh, of course, if we, if we wanted, we could be here all day long, all the time, looking at every single transaction. I don't think that's really what you want. It's really what your internal control structure is intended to do, is to identify and detect errors and misstatements and what have you. 
So again, ours is a higher level sort of um, viewpoint. The highest level of assurance that the audit can provide is what we call an unmodified opinion. So we're, the only thing in here, actually, in the audit report that's, that's the auditors is our opinion. Everything else is your information. So with that said, if there's ever a modification of the opinion, then that's really something that you want to listen for. We're saying, but we're qualifying it, or this is a modified opinion because of this or this or this. Really, you want to ask the question, why is that occurring? So with that said, there's a lot of information in here, and truth is, it's, it's um, I think the only people who really like this report are the auditors, to be honest with you. So I usually do, what I like to do is point you out into some specific pages that summarize the outcome of the audit. So with that said, if you have the audit report in front of you, if you could turn to page 84, and this is handy, this is called the Summary of Auditor's Results. And for your district, there's three specific areas that we're looking at. One would be the financial statements and the underlying internal controls that support your numbers. The second would be federal awards. And the last would be state awards. The federal awards and state awards are primarily compliance. And what that means is that you receive funding from federal sources and state sources, and you're required to comply with specific requirements in order to keep those monies. So with that said, the, you'll see to the right, under, uh, to the side of financial statements, we have an unmodified opinion. And if we had any material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, they would be noted here. They would follow immediately after this page. For the federal awards, unmodified opinion, we have to look at certain federal programs. And this year, we looked at what we call the special education cluster. It had the most expenditures in there, and so that's the one that we chose, and, and other reasons that we would consider it to be a high-risk program. And then lastly, there, there's a, a whole lot of state awards on here, um, and you have an unmodified opinion related to that. So from, from my perspective, this is the outcome that you really kind of want to see. Now, with that said, there's always opportunities for improvement in our minds as far as what we call control deficiencies. And those actually begin on page 89, and uh, this year they're primarily dominated by associated student body activity, which is not different than other years as well, to be honest with you. The other page that I think is really important for um, board members to kind of focus on in here is what we call the Schedule of Financial Trends and Analysis, and that's on page 70. Financial trends are incredibly important. It kind of helps you identify where you've been and where you're going. And so most of the information in this audit report is intended to be for the fiscal year that just was completed. This is the only page in the audit report that actually has three years worth of information, including the year that we audited, and then what we call your out year or the budget year, which is the year you're currently in. So again, this is really where you want to look to see how you are trending. Being a basic aid district, uh, your little last line, average daily attendance isn't as critical for you. Um, but the things that you do want to look at is, are you deficit spending? Um, two of the three years that we're looking at, you, you did deficit spend. Um, you're retaining a, a solid reserve. Um, this is, there, there's nothing here other than, than some deficit spending, which is quite frankly it always occurs um, when you have uh, when you have a lot of needs, program needs, and what have you. So, but that's the sort of trend that I would look at, and just just be cautious of that. Uh, your debt actually is declining. So this is really a, again, if I'm new to the district and I want to look to see your where you're at and where I believe you're heading, this would be the page that I'm looking for. So with that said, that summarizes the outcome of the audit, and as always, I'm here to answer any questions you may have regarding the audit itself. Well, I noticed that you found something about not reporting vacation days. I'm sorry? Was that on page like 89? Yeah, 89. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 
Yes. Was this the first one or the second one? First one. Okay. Related to vacation accruals. Yes. Uh, so, part of our payroll test, we look at a lot of different things. We look at new employees coming on, employees that have left the district, and also vacation accruals. That's really critically important. And our testing noted that for a couple of the employees that we selected, the vacation time actually hadn't been input into the, um, the system itself. So whenever we find these sort of issues, we bring it forward, and then the district uh, generally, the business office looks at that and, and formulates a response. Um, I would guess that, that Mr. Dixon's already moved in that direction. Yeah. I guess my question is, if you if you find something, then do you look further? Do you look to see if there's more, more employees, or is that up to us? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Uh, we will. Uh, in this case, we didn't find any other than our initial sample. And, you know, with sampling, it, it's usually, it's generally driven statistically, meaning that statistically, if you have a large enough sample, you already kind of know what your, your rate of error is going to be. So if it falls within that, you, if you select another 100, you're probably not going to find any more than that. But even with that, we will expand the sample when we have issues. Now, if we had tested, let's just say 20 employees and all 20 of them were an issue, then we probably wouldn't expand the test. We'd probably say, we think you have a problem. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. Yeah, it does. Thanks. Okay. Sometimes when we've had in, you know, as you said, ASB is difficult. There's, a, there's already been a response. So do we expect that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. 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 Well, response. Okay. Sometimes that, by the time we can make a presentation, we've already had that. Right, right. Um, okay. This is last school so year, so it's okay. change from this year. It okay. should be reflected in the next few Thank you. We'll follow up also, but we'll also test other sites as well, because you, you want to keep sampling um, to make sure that it's not a systematic issue. It's just maybe isolated to one particular site, and then you address it uh, by changing your processes if need be. Well, I always try to do you justice and read what you've given us, and I always am learning something. I mean, it's, it's to me, it's a really complicated business, <laughs> so I, I, I appreciate what you do for us because it's. Well, thank you so much. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I just keep trying to learn. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Again, it's a pleasure to, to work with your district. Thank you. Thank you. For the rest of the evening. So, in response to some of the issues with ASD and cash controls, that's been modified since the report, as I just mentioned, that this occurred last year. And then, of course, with the attendance tracking, that's a constant issue we're promoting to all of our employees because we we have to encourage and remind them into our time and put their system so that it gets put into our time and we just pop it in. So, these two things have been on our radar for they're And they're always on our radar. These are important things that are easy to make care of. Well, I, I think most districts' uh, student body funds are, are looked at. I mean, I think that's pretty they are always on our radar. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I think I didn't ask it really well, but I I didn't know whether it had to go back to the auditor. In this instance, we could have put in a written response, but the change wasn't made for last year, so okay. it was made for this year. Okay. Got it. And now I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now we have, are going to have an annual organization meeting, and so it becomes this.
this is what comes. Yeah. <laughs> On election, I get to turn it back over to the uh, new board president, who will continue the elections appointments and connect the balance in the meeting. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I've uh, asked for uh, nominations for board clerk. I think it's here. He's up there. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I've asked for an uh, appointment of the Secretary of the Board of Education. And that's Dr. Gloria Underwood. I believe it's the board. So, we're going to stick with this. I'm good. Our next is appointment of the Board of Apps to the following groups. We didn't do any surveys or anything to see if anyone desired changes. So I think I think it might be great to make some changes <laughs> to kind of switch things around. And I I'd like to nominate Peggy for district representative for Orange County Nominating Committee and Orange County School Board Association. Oh, <laughs> for this comrade. Okay. okay. I'm not sure what it entails, but I it's You'll no, yeah, be good. You're, 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 you're okay. You're not afraid of strangers. No, I am not. I know that. This is good for you. You've done it for several years, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. She can ask you. You can prep me. Who was your alternate? Who was Kimmy? I don't know who it was. I'll be alternate with you. Okay. I'm happy. So that's just a point, and you don't need a motion. These are all appointed. It is appointed. Yes. I'm appointing you. Okay. Since <laughs> you are president, I will take that over. I think we appointed you. That's why <laughs> <laughs> mm, she didn't call me earlier this week. No. <laughs> and um, if it's if it's an agreement, I'll stay as a rep to the PTA Council. Okay. Yeah. And I don't even I don't know who the all is. I'll say it's school power just because I've only been doing it for about right. a few months. I haven't really been doing that long. So. Yeah, you want to stay on the yeah, I'll stay on I would like to change. I would like to. Do you need oh. an alternative? Yeah, because okay. we all need. Okay. Um, okay. If I'm you're going to give thinking. everybody a job, you can. I know nothing about the tool. Let's do it. But um, to learn about it. What? I don't know. I'm I go to the meeting. So I'm good. She's there. Yeah, she's there. I'm on the board. Oh, are you on the board? Oh, then we should have well, somebody wants to do, I mean, I don't care if I go to no, the show. No, no, so I'm not the alternate. I'm actually on the PTA board. Yeah. Oh, you're tech this time? Or you're tech now? Or? I'm their parliamentarian. I'm their parliamentarian. I maintain the rules. <laughs> <laughs> what was the thing? Yeah, I have It's fine. I have PTA, PTSD, so it's all good. <laughs> so they're all parallel. I'd like to try the. And I'd like to try the endowment for well, to just to learn more about because I don't I don't know that much about it. You want endowment? Okay. That, that, that the meeting was eight o'clock on Friday morning to once a month. So I'll tell you. That that works. Okay. I'll just tell them. I'll just give you the alternates here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, okay. So, so as secretary, this is unclear. So we have uh, Peggy Wolf. As the uh, OC, um, OCSBA rep, with Keta as the alternate, we can reach council PTAs. Uh, Jan as first, and Carol, Carol as the alternate. Correct. The foundation, uh, School Park Foundation. Yeah, I have Peggy. Peggy still, because she just started. And the alternate is. I'll do alternate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, endowment.
She not waited. Complaining. <laughs> not complaining. Somewhere got two. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. One yeah. Is, yeah. the one is kind of just a one. Oh, okay. Oh, she does the CTE thing. She does. That's not good. Yeah. 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 That is my God. And just, just, yeah. Yeah. just as a reminder, yeah. uh, the uh, board president and myself were actually members of all of these as exhibitions, and they saw that there have been times where Jen may attend one of them. Yeah. Uh, so there's a reason that we might not be able to be at a meeting that year that it would be, and the alternate can't be there, so like Jen might know. One of us is probably going to attend as well. Okay. Uh, our next item is to set our meeting dates, time, and place for 2018. Uh, these are the recommended regular meeting dates. These meetings will be held at a time determined by the board, and it's typically the second and fourth Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, so these reflect Tuesdays. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and the Teacher of the Year banquet is not on Tuesday. This October twenty third. So we'll say this time, and they we typically meet here in the border. I don't know what meeting we have. I don't know what meeting was this year. Is the meeting with the city, or are we down there? Are they up here? I think they're here. They're here. Okay. All right. So, are there any known conflicts between the city and the department? And hopefully, we can keep the city stable. I think. We try to. We do on our typical ones. So our typical ones, mm -hmm. all right. So, oh, then motion. We, motion. So, yeah. there's nothing. Okay. Can I hear all in favor of Aye. the dates and times? Aye. <laughs> That's a good thing. And then we have several annual reminders. The first is the Aliso property option reminder, which is you have it, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't bring the dollar over. Oh. <laughs> it's a big change going like from paper to actual coin. Uh, uh, um, yes. Yes. And I provided some information in the update as well as we're also doing clarifications with the city on the matter. Right. Which is always, which is really good. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, our, and you're going to be in charge of it in 2041. That's why I switched it to the coin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a head to tail and then we have uh, resolution uh, number 01-02, which 01-02. Facilities and care replacement program is to remind our commitment to all of those who supported our plans that we are committed to keeping our facilities in good repair. And we can make a to that. Okay, then we move on to the consent calendar. Are there any items that we're going to need to remove? And we have a couple of changes on the minutes of special meeting and on the hotel for the dance. There we go. So then I have a motion, please, for uh, items uh, consent A through N. Are there any minor questions or comments on the hotel? And I need a, a public comment on these items. So I'll speak up at once. <laughs> um, Oh, I was just going to say some of the conferences looked really interesting. Oh, there's, there's one too? Yeah, there yeah are I, I especially liked that. Uh, or two, I especially liked the Kate one with literacy and justice for all. And what I, what I really appreciated was their putting the spoken word as part of that. Yes. And uh, I hope that we, I hope that information is disseminated from those who go to those who don't go. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Uh, uh, we have information items tonight. Uh, update on the computer science pathway committee. So, yes, okay. so Mike will be presenting on the committee. I'd like to thank Mike for his leadership in this area. He's been a lot of fun to partner with on this committee and then getting us all organized. Thank you. Uh, as the makers and members of the board, we I'm uh, glad to give you an update on what we've done so far. We got, I got a chance to work with some amazing staff, with principals, assistant principals, uh, teachers, and classified staff on the committee. So we have everybody represented and all schools represented. And uh, we started by just gaining a better understanding of what computer science is and what digital citizenship is and what digital literacy is. We kind of went over those terms and gained a better understanding. Then we identified a skills continuum what we're doing now. So like, what are we currently doing in the district from K-12? 
and we saw a lot of activities going on, which was good. Uh, but we realized that we needed to take one step further and kind of look at aligning them with, you know, like having a line in a curriculum. So one, one thing that came out of the committee right away was the high school was using code.org in their class. And the middle school looked at, they, they had just released the middle school curriculum in code.org. And uh, Stacey Curati said, oh, that looks like it will match up what we need in middle school. So they're piloting that. So that would be a good alignment from middle to high. Um, so that's one thing that came out of the committee. The other thing that came out is we looked at the computer, we looked at the standards for computer science. Uh, there isn't state standards yet, but they're coming out soon. Uh, so we looked at the Computer Science Teachers of America standards, there's about 300, and we tried to align them with existing uh, activities. And we realized right away in that process that this project was going to be more than just a small committee that meets a, you know, a few times a year. This was going to be something that needed more work and needed more align, you know, more work as far as working with the teachers to align it and training the teachers and perhaps even helping with you know teaching the students in, in, this, in this project. So that's kind of how we ended is realizing that there is more work to be done on this, but that we need additional manpower to complete the project. And that's kind of a summary of that. When you say 300 standards set like K-12? K-12, yeah. <laughs> and not only grade level. Thank you. Well, I mean, it's a lot. It is a lot. I saw an article today that talked about librarians being a part of that. Yes. And are librarians included in your discussion? So the, the committee recommended that we, we include that as part of this project, and we're exploring that with you know, different ways to, to make that happen. Uh, but yes, they definitely are, especially for digital literacy because that includes mm -hmm. research and all of those parts. Thank you. When do they expect that when does the state expect to have their standards? We think summer, but we're not oh, there's yeah. no okay. so there's it's no soon. guarantee. It's gonna be soon with everything else we're doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that uh, the K twelve state started working on that Computer Science Continuum, uh, the State Board of Education, there's an expectation from them. Uh, they're seeing other uh, countries, other states starting to really um, take this on as an understanding of what is the expectation for our students when they graduate as fourth graders that they should be exposed to, know how to do, um, and have opportunities and exposure to. So uh, we'll be working through that. Um, one of the areas that, uh, as Mike mentioned, you know, and in this evaluation, it's a fairly robust area with 300 standards and, and a variety of opportunities for us to get into the classrooms. Um, we will need to work with our teachers to model that. And uh, we'll be bringing forward potentially a point one point in January to have a recommendation from staff on how we might accomplish that. Um, so stay tuned on that, but that's forthcoming to um, work for review. And working with um, our uh, school foundation as well to determine this scenario Increase our contingency. So, again, areas that we're looking to, to enhance and support. Uh, it can't be one more thing. It needs to be something that we um, walk along and, and identify where those opportunities lie that our teachers can partner. Um, uh, we've found success with our current model in part with, um, with Bridget, who is just a fantastic uh, person all the way around, but she goes in and helps support what we currently are doing with our students and find ways to tweak it to make it more in line with our instruction uh, and in line with the standards. So we uh, believe that's a great model, bless you, that we'll uh, look to potentially replicate uh, for next school year to support our teachers. Because a lot of teachers are doing a lot of technology in classrooms. Mm -hmm. and instruction. Aides are doing technology in their classrooms K-5. Uh, but we, we understand that trying to say, now you need to do more with the standards, that's it's a huge under. I also look at it as, so yes, we have the technology and creating a model that was, that was seminars on that, which is important, but, but hand in hand with that is the, the literacy part. Mm -hmm. And how do you sift what is and what isn't? And you have to learn that. I think that's something that we've got to start teaching at a very young age at this point. Because it's Especially so. the exposure that kids have 
outside, outside the exactly. So how do you how do you how do you see, believable then that they just say right? Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. How how do we how do we help them to discern what is? I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 That was his comment on digital, not only literacy but leaders, the people who understand the complexity of it. I just exactly. think it's, yeah. it's so it's moving so quickly and it it's is. so yeah. and it's just everywhere. Well, you see when your kids going to the different innovative things that have come forward that were just the teachers who latched onto it were just like they love that, and then yeah. the next year there's something that yeah. is beyond yeah. that. Yeah, and that's why it's so important that it's a skill continuum, um, not necessarily uh, you know you learn how to use Scratch. Right. It, right. It, is, it really it's is a skill. One time. Yeah. Right, and, and the and the thought process. So uh, what you'll hear a lot of is analytical thinking, critical thinking. Communication, collaboration, creativity. Those are all areas that mm -hmm. we have to work through. And sometimes people use analytical thinking and critical thinking interchangeably, and they're not. They are different things. Um, so, this is our opportunity to, to use the right tool for the right purpose. And technology is not the end all be all by any stretch uh, for every single uh, issue that arises. However, we, uh, we need to use it as the right tool at the right time uh, to teach those skills to our students, knowing that. Um, the computer has a, a, it's, it's not going anywhere. Right. Uh, uh, but how do you help students navigate that and, and manage all the information that comes on your computer? You know, it's like drinking from a fire hose, uh, unfortunately. Time. So, um, but so I appreciate the comments as well. So we'll, we'll continue the conversation as well. But in the meantime, if the board has uh, questions, uh, comments. It seems to me, it's, to me, it seems like tied into lifelong learning concepts that you that we need to help our students understand. It isn't going to be this way, you know, when you're at college or when. I mean, it's it's a continual change and it's fast. Everything's so fast, and that if we can help them learn how to be open to that, and then how to sit through it and utilize what actually we're learning to them, that's and it would and we have to do that for our our staff then too. At the same time, it's it's a challenge. It's not. I think it's. I think education is a lot harder now in a way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The iPhone today to a kindergartner will be obsolete by the time they're in high school. So but that's how so we chip, right? It's ten years old. Just, it's only ten years old. <laughs> it's amazing. We're already talking about it. Amazing. I think that was the iPhone's ten years old, right? Right, ten yeah. years old. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Ten we're doing more. <laughs> <laughs> We have a number of action items this evening. Our first is approval to accept the 2016-2017 district audit. Thank you, President Biggers. As the um, Royce Townsend from the auditing council presented tonight, uh, we believe that staff all the opinions are accurate. And those are comments that were monitored for areas of improvement um, are mentioned in there. We've already taken steps to address those and um, are continuing those areas of focus for us so that next year's audit is clean, but we're pleased that it's unmodified and um, that it shows strong fiscal strength for our district that we're hoping to continue and be presented on that a little bit later in this work. I agree. Thank you. So we need a motion to come up. So put that down. Uh, any public comment? That was in favor. Uh, I oppose. That carries by vote. Uh, next is approval of positive certification of first interim reports. Dixon, all in tonight. Yeah, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> we have what, 50, 60 slides today? <laughs> no, I don't ever go below 40. <laughs> Thank you, President Vickers, and this may look familiar for those who attended our JFMC committee. Um, the first interim report, I'm happy to say we're recommending a positive certification based off um, the analysis of our budget in current year and then two out years. So positive certification essentially means that we're showing we can meet our current obligation this year and two years out. Um, there have been a, num a number of changes from our adopted budget to first interim, of which I'm going to highlight tonight. Um, they are all included in the detailed report, however, I summarize them in this presentation for us. So the first major change, and we mentioned, we talked about this at the budget adoption, is that the total compensation increase of 1.5%. Uh, 
and the off-schedule payment of 1% was not yet reflected in the salaries and benefits, which it now is. Uh, we reduced our average daily attendance to reflect what our actual enrollment has come in at this year. Um, we added in the one-time funding, which was not assumed at all in the one in the uh, adopted budget. So though our ADA come in a little bit lower and adjusted lower, we didn't assume any, any bit of one-time money, which is based on the average daily attendance. So that's a very positive change for us. We're going to see some resolutions later tonight that we're proposing um, to increase our uh, basic aid differential reserve fund 17 by a total of 250,000. 125,000 of that coming from the Aliso property reserve, and 125,000 of that coming from general fund. This, at the end of the day, leaves us, when we look at our ending fund balance, of $530,000 of potential one-time expenditures that are driven off board goals and priorities. And this is in alignment with what we've had in the past few years between five and $700,000 for these potential one-time expenditures, which can deal with a lot of unforeseen or if there's um, goals or curriculum council adoptions that aren't included in the current budget as is. So it's, it's a flexibility of us to, if there are changes, because it is early in the year, there's a little buffer in there. So you can see here's the changes um, in our first interim report. You see the revenues um, have assumed, they're assumed the same plus the one time funding. That's the biggest change in there. Uh, the expenditures, uh, are, it's still roughly the same, though we added in the 1.5% total compensation. We had assumed that we just hadn't put it into the salaries and benefits in the adopted budget. The change in fund balance is about negative $1.2 million. However, this is very typical, again, as in prior years at first interim. In fact, last year it was almost double that in, in the negative. And that leaves us a projected un, un, uh, ending fund balance of about $6.2 million. You can see that in our multi-year projection, the ending fund balance is projected to grow. And that, again, assumes the same percentages of revenue growth that we had in the past, 5.5% this year, 4.5% in the two subsequent years. So I think it's important that we say projected ending fund balance. What does that entail? So our, the components of our ending fund balance, we have our $50,000 non-spendable revolving cash accounts, routine restricted maintenance reserve. That is something that was established at the same time as the FERC and uh, it's a reserve we maintain in our routine restricted maintenance for potential emergencies for um, unforeseen maintenance costs beyond the DLD budget. The assigned one-time expenditures, that again falls back into the potential uh, one-time um, goals and expenditures from the board priority or flexibility committee. And our reserve for economic uncertainties, that's based on the 5% of our total expenditures. One thing we did mention in one of the major changes that first interim from adopted budget was adding into Fund 17. And I wanted to take the moment here on this slide to explain why. You see the basic aid differential calculation is based if we fell out of basic aid status, what would the difference be between what we'd get versus what we had budgeted to expend? You can see that we'd be short, you see the 100 differential funding there, about $30 million. So it would cut our budget nearly in half. So when we talk about being 100% um, fully funded in our basic aid differential, uh, we need about $5.6 million more dollars than we have based on today's calculation and today's reserve level. So today, we're sitting at about 82% total funded towards basic aid differential. So that is why we're making moves starting in this budget cycle to increase our fund 17 so that we close that gap. We don't, the board policy reads that if we, if we get below two thirds of that differential calculation, we need to come back to the school board with a plan of how we're gonna repay it. So that, again, that's why we're taking steps now, so that we don't get close to that two-thirds and we can maintain between that 80 100 percent, um, so that we're uh, sitting on solid ground if, should, God forbid, something unforeseen happen that takes us out of that status. The two-thirds threshold today, it's sit at about almost $21 million. So you can see we're sitting closer to $26 million. So we're in a good spot, but if it is an area, we're going to start focusing on. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions, and I'd recommend that the board approve this as a positive certified first Can I get a second comment? I actually asked Jeff on that was so we, what we say we're going to do X, X, and X over there, and we commit the dollars. You know, what if something untoward happens, and then we've already got the dollars cut, and he's like, oh, because that was my thing. Yeah, do it like that. Yeah, do it like that. He's like, oh. 
Any public comment on that first interim? Not ask for motion for approval. And I, I just think that it's. I really appreciate the clarity of this breakdown on plan seventeen because he did point that out in the audit that that's really the only risk here is if something were to happen to the basic aid funding. And it's I think it's really important to keep reminding us, you know, how much more we have from that system and if it there's a change. I mean that was the whole purpose of this. So I mean, I appreciate the, the fidelity to that, but also how clear it is in the way I want to thank you for establishing it. It's a very important yeah. fund, and it puts us in a very strong fiscal spot. Without that, we wouldn't be anywhere near where we are. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Here's a vote. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, approval of resolution number 1722, established interfund transfers of 125000 from the general fund to the special reserve for non capital outlay fund for 2017 18. President Vickers, this is a, a, the approval of the transfer from the 125000 from the general fund into Fund 17. So in addition to this, we'll have a resolution later from the Aliso property, but this is the first of two that gets us a total of 250000 by increasing Fund 17. Public comment? Uh, one question. Motion please. Motion to okay, This is a resolution and we are including our student rep also in the, the, in the roll call for the resolution. So, as, um, okay, for the voting members, Mrs. Vickers? Aye. Mrs. Perry? Aye. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Normandy? Aye. Mrs. Wolf? Aye. And our student rep, Pecker Warner? Yes. Uh, next is approval of resolution number 17 23, established interfund transfer for 1200000 from the general fund to the Special Reserve Fund for Capital Improvement Plan for 2017 18. Thank you, President Vickers. This is to continue our contribution that we've been making on an annual basis to support the Capital Improvement Program, which has uh, been our main funding mechanism for most of our capital improvement projects district wide. And it will align with our facilities master plan, which we'll bring back to that date in February. Public comments? Public questions? Motion? Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Bakers? Yes. Mrs. Perry? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Mominen? Yes. Mrs. Walsh? Yes. And our student rep, Michael Walsh? Yes. 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 Uh, our next resolution, approval of resolution 1724, established interfund transfer of 900000 from the general fund to the special reserve fund. Facilities Repair and Replacement Program for 2017-18. Thank you, President Vickers. So this was talked about at the annual organization meeting uh, a little while ago. Uh, this is in response to maintaining our buildings um, in, in alignment with the general obligation passed back in 2000 and uh, ensuring that whatever we spend money on to replace or repair is um, maintained with fidelity. So this is, again, another annual contribution we've been making and we'll continue um, through the duration of the program. Thank you. Uh, public comment? Any questions? Any questions? Uh, motion to please. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, I think there was a uh, motion. All those in favor? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm getting used to that. I made all my notes here. <laughs> well, all right. Um, Mrs. Vickers? Yes. Mrs. Perry? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Normandin? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Michael Warner? Yes. Uh, next resolution, uh, number 1725, established interfund transfer of 125000 from the Special Reserve Fund for the Aliso Property Reserve to the Special Reserve for Non-Capital Outlay Fund for 2017-18. Thank you, President Vickers. So this is the only new resolution that we haven't done in the past. In the past, we would transfer this whatever amount of money based on the amortization of the loan from the Aliso Property to the General Fund. Now we're going to transfer it to Fund 17 to help us promote that increase. Um, as a side note, this is the first time I've ever received a yes vote from a student rep, so thank you, Piper. I really appreciate those votes, and I hope you vote yes on this one as well. Lobbying. Public questions. Board questions. Motion, please. Second. Roll call. Mrs. Vickers? Yes. Mrs. Perry? Yes. Mrs. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Normandin? Yes. Mrs. Wolf? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Our uh, next action item is approval to 
to award contracts for HVAC and painting unit costs bid for district wide services. Mr. Dixon. Thank you, President Vickers. Um, this is a unit cost bid. There is no uh, financial impact with awarding this bid. However, because of the amount of money we spend on mechanical unit replacements, repairs, and painting district wide, we do get close to the bid limit thresholds. So, in case we wanted to do more work or we're having to respond to a repair of some kind that it would exceed that, this would make it a lot easier. We did something similar with general contracting work um, a couple years ago. Um, and this is just another tool, a delivery method by awarding a unit cost bid that allows us to mobilize and prepare our work a little faster. Public comment. Board questions and discussion. Motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Uh, our last action item tonight, approval of agreement with Positive Coaching Alliance. John Gloria. Great. Um, this actually is a, apologies to the board, this is a ratification. Um, this was a um, item I actually discussed with the board uh, back in August um, prior to us um, having the Positive Coaching Alliance come onto campus and give our training to our coaches. Um, went to pay the bill and realized that we hadn't brought it for the rules. Um, but again, uh, one, of, one of those things where we we talked about it, but you know, it's not sport, so I apologize for that. But again, this is a positive coaching alliance that um, we partnered with. They've done um, sessions for our coaches. They also worked uh, that day that uh, we hosted a large portion of uh, folks throughout Orange County, uh, including athletes and coaches from other districts as well. To participate. Um, and uh, well, well received uh, training, and uh, as uh, Lance and can point out, just a great opportunity. So, uh, I can apologize for ratification, and uh, request that you approve so that we can pay our bill. Public comment? Any questions from the board? I have a question. When we did this for all the folks that came here, did, did we charge them or provide it? Uh, yeah, we were doing it anyway, so we provided it. Okay. And uh, the other question I had uh, it says two additional live workshops. Did we have those? Yes. We're, well, I believe we've had one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's an online portion that you, oh, you can do, and then there's a live portion as well. So I noticed it got swag bags. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of swag bags in there. So. Um, motion for someone. Okay. Carol, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, now we have, we didn't put it in here, but we usually have the time in the board for comment. Or that was my error. I added an item and bought that one. So we have liked it. Okay. Well, sorry, I just wanted to say that the dance show was they are really doing a good job. And pass that on to SD because yes. um, as I, I shared this with Dr. Gloria, but it's um, we went to that the other night and my husband said to me, They're really good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really um, yeah, a, a big kudos. It was a great show. <laughs> So I'd ask for a motion. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, January 9th, uh, 6 o'clock during the boardroom. A motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Thank you. 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 Thank you.